morning and welcome to another episode of uh, Sabbath School at the Tabernacles of the Adventist Church. We're indeed happy that you are able to join us today. Uh, it's really a privilege of a pledge of ours to weekly bring to you these Sabbath School lessons week after week. And after finishing a wonderful lesson study last quarter uh, in the book of the Psalms, uh, this quarter we begin a, a new topic, a, a new uh, lesson series. And we are not studying a book of the Bible this time, but we're studying um, a theme. And that particular theme is one that is dear to many of us. It's called the Great Controversy Theme. And uh, we are looking at this. The lesson's author, Mark Finley, uh, uh, brings us this lesson. He is one of our favorite um, uh, authors. And uh, we are indeed happy that uh, we have the opportunity to discuss this lesson today. Um, I, I want to remind you that um, the day at Tabernacle is set aside for a, is also set aside for a day of prayer and fasting. And um, uh, as we bring the lesson to you today, we also want you to be aware of that fact that we are also going to be at our church praying and fasting today for. Uh, the better outcomes in our life and in our world and in our churches. We definitely want to see that particular phenomena happen. And I would definitely encourage you to join us uh, today, uh, wherever you may be, uh, that you can pray and fast with us. Or if you cannot fast, you can just join us in prayer. Um, I also want to remind you that if you have any questions, you can text your questions to uh, the uh, by using the word Sabbath School and text the questions to 855-997-1170. That's 855-997-1170. And at the end of the lesson study, we also have a, a Sabbath School quiz. And um, if you are... If you take the quiz, you just um, uh, text SS Quiz. That's SS Quiz to the same number eight five five nine nine seven one one seven zero. We'll be definitely happy to uh, have you uh, with us today, um, and uh, encourage you to partake in in the quiz that that that's going on now. Uh, uh, this morning, before we begin, I'm going to ask you to bow your heads as we have a word of prayer to begin the lesson, and I'm going to ask Sister um, Williams to uh, say the morning prayer for us today. Most kind Heavenly Father, as we are about to go through our lesson study today, I pray, mighty God, that it might be a blessing to someone who is hearing our voices, dear God. I pray, O oh God, as we study that we also might be strengthened in our own personal lives. I pray a blessing upon today's proceedings, O oh God, and help that we may all be blessed. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. So uh, this week, as I said before, we're studying um, the great controversy theme. And we are looking at a, a theme that is of peculiar interest to us. Uh, when we think of this, um, when we think of old world, we see that there's a constant battle between right and wrong, between good and evil, uh, between uh, forces that we really can't control to a large degree. And um, we are, as it were, uh, working our way through this maze. The Great Controversy is just not something that goes on on a celestial level, but it's something that happens inside of us. The Apostle Paul says, the good that I want to do, I find myself not doing. And the bad that I don't want to do, that I find myself doing. Oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? We all find ourselves entangled in this mess mm -hmm. because there, there, there are forces of, the, the forces of evil are working to, uh, to, to destroy us, whereas the forces of good are trying to make us better. And we, as choice agents, we have to make a choice between uh, who we're going to serve. As Joshua said to the children of Israel, choose you this day whom you will serve. You know, And um, uh, so far, 
Uh, but we, we have seen that there's a huge challenge in what goes on um, in, in the lives of people and, and the choices that they make. So um, uh, this morning, we're going to look at the first lesson in our uh, summer school uh, quarterly for this quarter. And uh, the theme for this week's lesson is the war behind all wars. Um, and uh, we want you to uh, chime in with us as we continue to study this theme. It's an uh, as, as a interesting theme and one that uh, holds us um, in, 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 a, in, a, in a sort of a little bit of a tangle as we have to uh, choose sides in this war mm -hmm. and, um, and also learn about the, the physical war that, that has happened. So, uh, Brother Cummins, my first question is going to go mm -hmm. to you. Okay. And um, uh, we want to find out here... Um, Heaven is, when we think of heaven, we don't usually think of a place where war happens, right? Right, right. Heaven, okay. you know, the, the pictures that the poets paint are uh, clouds and uh, little baby angels flying around and peace. And, but but uh, heaven is really not like that, right? Is it? <laughs> so this morning, uh, can you uh, tell us a little bit about the, the factors involved in this first war, that uh, this first conflict that, that occurred in, in heaven? Um I, I know that there's a lot you can say, but just give us a, a broad right. overview and point us to the important issues in this war. Okay, as in the book of Revelations um, 12, 7 to 8, you say, and a war broke out in heaven. Amazing. As one of the writers said, such a uh, perfect place. Lucifer in heaven, before his rebellion, was a high and exalted angel. Now, we know in heaven the angels glorify God. It was, it was a, a, a joy for them. But apparently Satan, you know, I mean, Lucifer, as, he, as this was going on, he became very, very um, jealous about God's God's glory. And that's what I could see as we go through the lesson all week, that there's something, you have a hidden jealousy, your, your brother, your sister is doing something, and you tend to just, you know, you, know, you, know, you tend to resent them. And this brings on a, a, a bigger problem because... Angels, he also went to some angels and, and also tell them about this whole thing too. You see, Lucifer was envious and jealous of Jesus Christ. Yet when all the angels bowed to Jesus to acknowledge his supremacy, the high, um, the high authority and, and rightful rule, all of these things that he was seeing, and somehow he just couldn't, ha couldn't accept it because he wanted to be in charge. He wanted he want the glory as well too. Because we see here in the book of, um, it, I think it's in Ezekiel. Ezekiel, he was one of the most beautiful angels in heaven. And uh, again, he was like a special type. Mm -hmm. And again, having this, having this special tease, he wanted, to be, he wanted to be part of the most high God as well. Mm -hmm. And that's where problems begin, when you want to be like somebody else. So we have to learn, we have to learn to, from this example. That sometimes, you know, as we have a hidden, hidden resentment, hidden jealousy, it's going to grow, brethren. It's going to grow, and eventually it will come. It will have a bigger, bigger problem, because you can see what happened. Okay, Michael and his angels fought, and the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought. See that? But they did not what? They did not prevail. Nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. So we see here, there can be two governments in heaven. It's either one or the other. And God in his wisdom and his mercy. God is still love because he, he, gave, he gave Lucifer time to repent. But he was so prideful, and that's where the breakdown fell. He, he, his pride overtook him, and he ended up fighting, and then ended up having to be kicked out, out of heaven. So may God help us understand these key things, to remember that jealousy is a severe sin. It happened in heaven. And it can happen. It still happens around the world as we go around. It happens to make more and more, more, and more conflicts. So we have to understand that God is in charge. He runs this universe. I don't care what you do or think or feel. God is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Amen. You know that that's you know I. Uh, it's, for me, it's mind-boggling. I, I lost yes. for words here as well. <laughs> to think that this angel, who was so beautiful and, like I said, the prototype probably for angels, yes. and that um, God had probably made him like the first of all the angels, you know, and here he is, and um, 
being exposed to the, all the intricacies of what the Godhead is. And, mm -hmm. yeah, and, yeah. and in this perfect world, he decides that he's going to choose to find a way different just because he had the power to choose. Right. And that power of choice sometimes can be quite rough on us because we tend to choose a lot of the wrong things in, 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 in our daily experiences. Mm -hmm. and, and, um, and this is probably at the heart of the great controversy, the right, fact that right, we exactly. tend to choose the wrong kind of things sometimes. And, and I hope and pray that, um, that as uh, Elder Cummins said, that we will make the right kind of choices as we seek to serve God in this battle, uh, this great battle to, uh, mm -hmm. in, in our world. Sister Williams, um, I want you to go a little further here. And I want you to compare and contrast the, the character of God and that of Satan. Mm -hmm. The character of God, you know, because here we have two beings. Obviously, God is the, uh, the self-existent one. And Satan is one of the existing beings that he created. But here is the toy who wants to be better than the toy maker, you know, as it were. You know. Can you, can you t tell us a little bit about, uh, about them? Contrast them for us. Okay, on Monday's lesson it says, Lucifer deceives, Christ prevails. Much of what we learn about Satan is summed up in his name. In 1 Peter 5 verse 8, Peter calls him your enemy, the devil. Satan's actions and motivations are that of an enemy. God's character, in contrast, is summarized by the word love. A deep, ongoing concern for the welfare and well-being of others. God is love. Let's look at a few more comparisons. Mm -hmm. In dealing with sin, God could employ only righteousness and truth. Satan used what God could not, flattery and deceit. Here we see Satan says God is restrictive. But God is the one who brings freedom. Sin is restrictive. Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. Amen. Amen. Satan doesn't want us to be happy. Jesus wants to fill us with all joy and peace in believing so that we can abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Satan says we are nothing but sinners. God says, I am forgiven, Hallelujah. justified, sanctified, and washed in the blood of Jesus Christ. Satan says our sins are too great. God has cast our sins in the depth of the sea. Satan is like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Jesus is the conquering lion of the tribe of Judea. Hallelujah. I just want to encourage us right. that no matter where we are in our journey with Jesus, when Satan comes in with those deceptions against us, we have the opportunity to make a choice. Choose to stand on the word of God. Stand on what God says about you. Let us make a choice for Jesus. Choose to stand on the Lord's side. Amen. 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 I, like, I like that uh, uh, comparison mm -hmm. yeah. there. Um, it is really good to know that we have a God who loves us, who cares for us, Amen. who is willing to save us. Um, he went to the extremes and sent his own son, Jesus oh, yeah. Christ, to die on Calvary that we may be saved. And, and to think that people would serve a devil mm -hmm. who cares nothing for them, nothing. who only wants to kill, steal, and destroy. Right. You know, I, I find that to be um, a, a pretty telling um, comparison. And I cannot, for the life of me, understand why we choose to, to, to follow in, in that uh, pathway. Right. Uh, uh, Jesus says that most people choose the broad way mm -hmm. rather, rather than the narrow way. Right. And, and I, th I think that um, we definitely need to make some choices. You want to say something? Yeah, that's what yeah. happened. If you go, we have this, this, this choice to make, right? But God, you see, it's so amazing. He does not force mankind to do, go his way. And that'll be some, sometimes we have to understand in the, in the government that they, they're doing certain, making certain rules, certain laws to force things, and that's where problems come, comes in. Because God, God's nature is love, and He wants us. Where there's freedom, there's love, and therefore freedom of choice is because of, because of love you do, you do the right thing. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's all right. Any other comments then? If not, we're going to go on a, a little bit further in this. Um, uh, war that started all wars, or that is the backbone of all wars. 
and Sister Love Philogene, um, could you um, uh, tell us a little bit about what implications does the sacrifice of Jesus for humanity uh, have for us? What, what, are the, what, what, what are the implications of, of the sacrifice that Jesus made for us? Thank you. Good morning and happy Sabbath. Morning. I'm going to start by reading in John 3, verse 16. As we all know, it said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes him should not perish but have eternal life. Why the atonement is efficacious for the elected, the sacrifice made by Christ on the cross demonstrate God's desire for all people to be reconciled to him. As we continue, it said the sacrifice of Christ as detailed in Christian theology holds profound implication for humanity on both spiritual and ethical level. Here are some of the core implications often associated with Christ's sacrifice. We have salvation and redemption. Amen. One of the most fundamental beliefs in Christianity is that Christ's death and resurrection provide the means for humanity, salvation and redemption. It is believed that through his sacrifice, Jesus Christ paid the penalty for human sin, offering everyone the opportunity to be reconciled with God. This notion is rooted in the idea of atonement and essential to the gospel message. And the second one is the new covenant. We have the sacrifice of Jesus. is also seen of a new covenant between God and humanity. In this covenant, the laws of God are written, one believes heart, and they are given the Holy Spirit to guide them. The third one that I want to discuss is example of perfect love and obedience. Christ's willingness to suffer and die for humanity, he seen as the ultimate example of selfless love and obedience to God's will. It's called one believers to emulate this love in their life, serving others and living accordingly to God's commandments. This aspect of Christ's sacrifice, emphasize of Christ's sacrifice the moral and ethical implication for how Christians are called to live. Amen. And we have victory over sin and death. Christian teaching often interpreted Christ's resurrection as a victory over sin and death, providing believers with the hope of eternal life. Amen, amen, amen. And the Universal invitation is the sacrifice of, of Christ is presented in Christian teaching as an offering for all of humanity, regardless of race, nationality, of prior belief. It's seen as a universe invitation to receive forgiveness. Yes. Enter into a relationship with God and become part of the global community of believers. So that's all I have to say. All right. Mm -hmm. Thank you. you had a lot to say there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, it is it, the, the, that sacrifice that Jesus Christ made on Calvary uh, allowed him to be our great high priest in, in heaven. Right, right, right. And as a consequence of becoming our great high priest, he's able to save to the uttermost, as you said. And I, I think that that's one of the more um, wonderful uh, complications of um, uh, our blessings, I should say, of, of, of this great controversy. We see the love of God being played out in the life of Jesus Christ so that um, we all can, um, as it were, receive that 
gift of salvation mm -hmm. and become the children of God that he wants <clears throat> us to be. I, I, I'm really happy that God's love would reach out to us and bend over backwards, as it were, so that we can have life and have life for et eternally. And the sacrifice of Jesus Christ becomes pivotal in the salvation that is accomplished for our sins. You want to yeah, add, add yeah, that, a, a question just came to my mind about um, had Adam and Eve not sinned, right? Mm -hmm. they were the, but sin would be still there. Correct. Sin was in heaven, so it was sin, sin was existing. Okay, then, then when would sin be ended? We, we, yeah, we know now when, 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 it would, when it will come to an end. But let's say had, had Adam and Eve not sinned, would have God still end sin? Yes. Yes, he would. Uh, yes. He cannot let sin exist forever. No, no, no. So, so therefore, um, Satan's end would have would come, have come okay. sooner. Exactly, but, but, exactly. But because um, Adam and Eve decided to choose his side, That's now we right. are in this um, controversy that is continuing to our day. And God says a day will come when he will definitely end the controversy. Amen. And, and we look at, we're, we're looking forward to that day. Amen. Yeah. What a mystery. Eh? Yeah. Wow. Yep. So um, uh, the next question um, is, uh, I'm going to allow all of us to discuss this question. So I'd, I'd like us to chime in on, on this question as much as possible. Um, when we, therefore, when we use the term, the, the great controversy, what do we mean? Uh, what, what, what are we talking about? Um, could anyone, any, anyone could chime in and let me know what you think about this particular phenomenon? Anyone? Okay, well, um, sin, we could see because of sin, mm -hmm. and because the, the plan is to destroy sin, the devil, is, he is going all out. He, go, he know what his, end will, what his end will come, his end will come. But I see he is trying his best to get more on his side, because remember, one third of the angels came from heaven with him. One third. And now we know, well, since now, um, my, my end is destruction. Therefore, I'm going to try and get the whole world to be, try and deceive the world where, where they can be, where he can have more with him to be in, this, in his destruction. Mm -hmm. So this, 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 is a, this battle is, is really, it's, it's a dangerous battle. And only, only, the, only God of the universe can handle it. Nobody, we, 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 can, we can handle it. We cannot handle this. this this controversy. Any, any other comments for anyone else? Yeah. What do you think of the great controversy? What What does that mean? For me, when I hear those words, I think about a battle between good and evil, right. but ultimately, good will triumph over evil when Jesus comes to redeem His people. Right. Yeah. You know, in, in every cowboy movie or <laughs> whatever, right, right. we we all we always see um, there's a battle going on uh, between mm -hmm. um, the good and the bad. Yep. And as a consequence of the battle that goes on between the good and the bad, we, we find ourselves mm. um, uh, uh, always rooting for the good guy, you know. And um, in, in this particular instance, as we root for the good guy, right. um, we want to see the good guy win. Mm. But we also want to be on the side of the good guy. Right, right. And, and, I, and this morning, I, I hope and pray that we all choose to be on the side of the good guy in this great controversy uh, battle. Pastor, uh, uh, can you tell us a little bit what the Great Controversy means to you? Uh. Good morning and happy Sabbath, Sabbath School. Uh, we thank you so much for, for being here with us. Uh, Doc, I heard the question. Um, this is about the Great Controversy. Um, when we talk about the Great Controversy, I, I, I had to look up the word controversy. Um, it means a disagreement. Uh, typically, when prolonged, however, uh, it becomes public and heated, really intense. And so when we talk about the controversy here, uh, it means that there was a disagreement. It means that there was an argument, uh, a fight, uh, a great war, as it were. And this war has stemmed from the beginning until now. Now, you may ask the question, who is this war between? Um, this is between God and Lucifer, or God and Satan. Uh, so we're in a great war, a great battle, an argument, a fight that continues to this day. Um, now, how did this thing begin? Um, how could there be war in heaven? Uh, because if heaven is perfect, then all of a sudden you're telling us that there is war that began in heaven itself. And that's a mystery to find out how can, can war develop in heaven? How can there be an argument in a place that is supposed to be perfect? Well, Isaiah actually lets us know that, uh, that 
in, in chapter 14, verses 13 and 14, it says, For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven and will exalt my throne above the stars of heaven. I will sit along also upon above the stars of God. I will sit upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. And then it says, I will be like the most high. That is the voice of Satan or Lucifer yeah, yeah. that's saying that he wants to ascend his throne above God. He wants to be God. And that's where war developed because Satan felt like the light that he's seeing always was coming from him rather than he realized that he was just a reflector of the light of God. And so this dragon, this Satan, this Lucifer, uh, this great evil one who had, had tried to take and usurp the, the power of God and take over heaven. Can you imagine Lucifer being in charge of heaven? Oh, man. Wow. What that will be like? And, and, and the sad part is that this war developed and war of argument and God was merciful. God was patient and long-suffering. So was still extending grace to Lucifer even after he was doing wrong. And this came to a level where God had to call a meeting in heaven. And the Bible says that, that the Lucifer lost this battle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Revelation chapter 11 verse 9 says that the dragon was thrown or hurled. So mm -hmm. this war of words, uh, Dr. Carrington, it became physical. I know uh, oftentimes we're saying, well, you know, this was just a war of words. So it was just an argument in heaven. It was not yeah. war as we would know it. But can you imagine Lucifer taking one-third of the angels of heaven? In fact, there was a little bit more. Sister White, um, in, in Testimonies, I think it was Volume 1, actually mentions that it was half that, uh, that started to listen to Lucifer. And some had the change of heart and came back. Or can you imagine if there was half on the side of Lucifer, even today? What it would be like, even today would be fighting like crazy, even more so than we're now. Um, but... Lucifer lost, the dragon lost, and the Bible says that God had to take him and throw him out of heaven. Thank God he threw him out. And Ezekiel chapter 28 verses 12 to 15 lets us know that when God threw him out, flung him out, tossed him out, that he fell to the earth like lightning. That means he fell so hard that he had to get up and realize, where am I? Right, um, right. Before he had access, and we know that from the book of Job because he showed up right, yeah. and he said, and God asked him, where did you come from? He says, I've been walking to and fro on the earth. And Lucifer is still walking to and fro on this yes, earth, yes. seeking whom he may devour. This is not a regular fight. This is a fight where it's against uh, spiritual warfare in wicked wickedness in high places so we are fighting a battle here on this earth and it continues even to this day but the good news is coming up very soon so that's what we're talking about when we say the great controversy it's a war that's happening between christ and between satan mm -hmm. amen amen yep. Yep. so there you have it ladies and gentlemen um we have started this lesson study this quarter we're on a journey discovering all the intricacies